Now, as you may have just heard, that is the stretch belt on my car squealing to death. Heated windscreen, rear windscreen, headlights. At this time of year, you're gonna use these things. Unfortunately, the stretch belt on my car isn't dealing with it very well. And I'm gonna show you how to change it. It's been a while since I did this. Now, there's one important thing that I'm going to point out. The only Mark 1 focus is to have a stretch belt system. So basically, a belt that doesn't, an auxiliary belt, serpentine belt, that doesn't have a tensioner. Okay? If you have an automatic 1.6 without air conditioning from 2001 onwards, you will have a stretch belt. I don't think it was fitted to any other model. If you have a manual with or without air conditioning, pre or post facelift, you will not have a stretch belt. It was only ever fitted to this type of variant of focus. So this is a very niche video for people. It will only help a small number of people. You right, sir? It will only help a small number of people. So hopefully, I can. Uh, it will either be uh, an informative video or just an entertaining one. It's been ages since I've worked on this car. I know you've, we've been having a lot of Rover 45 videos on this channel, but going forwards, hopefully, um, there'll be a little bit more focused content. And this is a job that I've wanted to do for quite a while. Uh, and as you can hear, it just can't take it. It's squealing all over the place. It only does it cold. Once it's warmed up after a few minutes, it stops. But the belt that is fitted to this car is a Gates stretch belt. Um, they are okay for timing belts, but I think Gates, in terms of auxiliary belts, I've had a bit of an issue. And aftermarket ones, when it comes to stretch belts, they're either a little bit too long or too short. I've got a genuine one right over here to show you. Okay, right, in terms of what we've got, we have the stretch belt itself. Now, this is the parts number oh which where's the parts number gone now right i believe that would be your parts number the one in black one eight four three seven six six correct kit drive belt now i've got this black sweat open i managed to get this on ebay for about 10 pounds right so this is the length six P, uh, 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 six, well, it's six um, ribs, okay? And that is the length, 1042. Now, Gates do a 1042, which is the belt that's fitted to the car, um, but we're going to compare the lengths when we get this uh, whacked on. But this is a, a genuine one, and it will last me for many years, and hopefully it won't shriek. Um, you For this job, you're going to need a short 15. You could use a long 15, but you don't need it and an E8 for taking out the stud, a screwdriver, and a 10 mil spanner. Right, first thing we have to do for safety is take the negative cable straight off. Okay, I don't want it anywhere near because we are taking the alternator off. Now there is a reason why we do this. I just, you don't want to, um, get that caught so what I'm going to do I'm going to isolate it using a piece of cardboard clicking to do this one-handed but you get the picture so it's now not touching the battery now I will state Ford will tell you to use a special tool basically that special tool comes in two pieces one one that bolts a little piece that bolts to the water pump so you go take your water pump bolts out and then thread the bolts through the pulley and the and this uh, this uh, special tool which you basically wind the belt on and there's a lower bit that goes on the crankshaft pulley you don't need that tool it's a complete waste of money and I'm going to show you how to do it with the tools that I've just showed you right the first thing to do is take this cap off the alternator okay for the negative cable you may if you've got a later model you won't have a plastic cap you'll have some sort of uh, material rubber bung you just slip it off the same way and take that 10 mil bolt straight out 
and then disconnect the wiring connector. This is a freezing cold morning, I'll tell you. God, that was tight. Must have over tightened it when the last time I did this. Um, it is currently pretty close to zero degrees out here, I'll tell you, freezing. Um, I'll just pop that off and just get a flathead screwdriver and just push into the clip and it will just come straight out. There you go. Now that is your alternator completely disconnected. Now, next thing, this 15mm bolt, take it out. I'm just going to get my spanner. Like that. You might need to break a bar. There we go. Oh, okay, that was tight. And then you take this 15mm out uh, so that you can get, you're going to have to remove this stud, but we're going to have to just slacken off that 15mm. No. Oh, go. Use a breaker bar if they're really tight, I advise you on that. Or because of the positioning of the alternator, you can use an impact gun. So I just whip these out. Now, there's a bolt at the bottom of the alternator, okay, on the side. That's a 15mm. Again, use this to slacken it off. Okay, we just want to slacken it off at the moment. So I'm just. Oh, the pulley might interfere a little bit. There we go, it's out. Like that slacken. Okay. I mean, that's pretty slack. Now, the next bit you're going to need is you're going to need to take out this stud. And you're going to need an E8 bit. Okay. Now, you've got to be very gentle because I've known these to shear. So, if it's going to struggle. Right. This is where a hammer is required. Straight away. Gone. There you go. No need for that no more. Because what you don't want is a head coming off that stud. Otherwise, you have to get a stud extractor. But that has now gone nice and smoothly there you go now the alternator is just winding its way forward now that bottom bolt it's slackened so it will come off um, but i think the key here is just to slacken off all the bolts equally so we're gonna just release this bottom one again right now we're in a position where the bottom bolt just here is yeah it's gone there it can go tight and then it can go slap but I'm just going to wind it out with my finger and then hopefully it will pull out this one is completely slack and you see how it's come away from the body the alternator will now veer to the left hand side so just keep on winding these three bolts out until they're ready to come out oh. this one seems a bit reluctant to pull there we go that's gone okay This one, these will now be tight because the whole alternator is going to want to shift. So you'll probably just have to use the socket again. Um, just be very, very careful because I've known, I have snapped one in the past. I've got a couple of these as spares just in case of uh, spare cars uh, from the scrapyard. It is always useful to have a spare stud lying around. And remember, it goes into aluminium, so we're going to be very careful when putting the alternator back on, which I'll show you once we've rooted the belt. Now, once, that, once that bolt's free, it should literally pull forwards. Yeah, it has. So what we've got to do is just make sure that this is actually coming out, because what will happen is because the alternator is f forced this way, it will force the stud back in. So instead of winding it off, effectively, you're winding it back in. Um, I know it sounds weird when you're doing lefty loosely, but it does. It doesn't really, you, you've got to sort of give it a push. So I would suggest you get a pry bar, pry bar to just push on this stud outwards and it will come out the block. Just trying to, oh yeah, it's gone. It's gone. Yeah, that's gone, that's come out. Right, there we go. Oh, the whole thing falls off, okay. 
and just leave it to one side, take that bolt out. And you just gotta be careful of that stud when you're going into that block because what you don't want to do is cross thread this block i mean this is removable but that's a lot of work um just for the sake of changing this and the alternator drops off now we're just going to put the alternator on the side there i have previously refurbished this the same uh, in the same method of uh changing the regulator the bearings absolutely fine and i clean the case up that is the original alternator by the way the original uh now this is a problem that I've seen a couple of times. Can you see a bit of white coolant down here? Now this water pump came with the kit, uh, the, the timing belt kit that I put on two years ago, and it has always leaked. I think I can just show you this. There you go. Can you see that? That is the seal at the end, just weeping a little bit. So I'm gonna clean that up but it's been doing this for two years. Now the thing with these water pumps is there is a hole just there. Can you see that hole just there at the end of my torch? There is a bleed hole. If it goes, if there is leaking of coolant through that hole, which there isn't on this, it means the seal has completely gone and you need a new water pump. Now mine has always leaked just a tiny bit. It's very frustrating but I'm a kind of aware about it. I mean, the coolant level doesn't seem to have dropped very much at all, but this is what you've got to understand about aftermarket water pumps. This is a Gates water pump. It came in the kit with the Gates timing belt, and I'll tell you, Gates water pumps are crap. You're better off just getting a timing belt from Gates and getting a genuine Ford water pump. I know it's gonna cost more money, but they don't leak like this after a couple of years. I mean, look, you can see it's still, you know, relatively new. I'm just gonna clean that up. Um, now you can see the belt just whips underneath the water pump, okay? There's literally nothing. It just goes around the crankshaft, underneath the water pump, around the alternator, and around the power steering pump, because obviously, because this is hasn't got air conditioning, the pump is mounted here instead of the compressor. Usually the pump would be mounted at the back uh, and those models have a tensioner. So um, I'm just gonna oh, drop the torch and uh, put this belt off around the pump. It's always a fiddly job this is. Just getting my fingers in. Honestly, I don't know how you're supposed to slide a special tool onto that. There's no, absolutely no room. It's more of a pain to do it that way. There we go. Right, one belt off. Gates Micro V stretch belt. It's a correct belt. Yep, six ply, 1042 to 1059. That just means it stretches by that amount. 17 millimeters, something like that. That's how much it stretches. And you know what? Come on camera, it doesn't look bad at all. I'm gonna keep this as a spare belt to put in the boot, because it still works, but it's not brilliant. I'm gonna clean that up and then we'll, we'll go through uh, the reinstalling. Right, this is where I've gotta have two hands, but essentially I'm putting it round the bottom of the crank pulley, underneath the alternator, underneath the pump, and it should loop up. And that's when we put the alternator on. Put this belt on. I remember years ago when I actually did a post on Facebook on the uh, Mark One Owners Group about this belt, and I said oh, I had to take the alternator off. And the amount of people that basically gave me laughing emojis and saying, "What the hell are you doing? Why do you need to take the alternator off? You just have to slacken the tensioner." And I said, "I don't have a tensioner. Have a look at my belt arrangement." and uh, people couldn't quite believe it that's how rare it is to get a stretch belt on a mark one focus on the mark two and mark three it became more standardized but on a mark one it is incredibly rare um to the point where people just didn't believe me um they did afterwards i can tell you that right and once you've got it on the crankshaft pulley, just use your, your hands to just lever it on the um, water pump. Just put it underneath the water pump. Now. Right, 
So now we've got it fully on the crankshaft, kind of around the water pump and looped up like that. Now this is going to be really tight, but basically you put your alternator and make sure you put the, um, the pulley on the belt. Don't worry if the belt goes across the water pump and loops over again. It will do that. It will fight you. It's worth you need two hands really. But once you've got that in position, then you can start to put the bottom bolt back into the block underneath the alternator. Okay, so it goes through there and goes in there. Just wind it in by a few threads. The alternator will not line up with these two bolts. It'll be like that. I'll show you that now. Okay, as you can see, I've managed to get it on the alternator pulley and I've put the bottom bolt back in just a little bit. It's not centered yet, but it's wound in as far as I can hand tighten it. So now, essentially, what I'm gonna do is just put, doing it one-handed. Right, now you see my meaning. You've got to get them bolts to line up, but this is the tricky bit. Because this belt is brand new, it's really tight and it will fight you. So yeah, be prepared for a bit of fighting. The aim of the game is to get the bolt that goes through here lined up first. The trick is you, you might need a second person for it or you could use a pry bar to pry against the chassis leg down there against the alternator. I wouldn't recommend too much because you might damage the bearing, uh, the pulley bearing in here. Um, but that's the aim of the game and I'm going to do it on camera for you. Right, prepare to struggle. Bolt in and line it up. Now this is where you've got to be very careful about not cross threading this bolt. You've got to try and get it lined up as best as you can and it will fight you. Now this belt is the tightest belt that I've come across, which is a good sign because I know it won't slip. If you're refitting an old belt, for whatever reason, so you've done the timing belt for instance, and you're putting the old belt back on, then you'll find it probably has stretched and it'll be easier. But literally, you've got to make sure that is lined up because what's happening is, as you can see, the alternator is pushing this way because the belt is not only pulling that way, it's pulling down as well because it's really tight. Um, so you've got to make sure that you're pushing in that direction. As I say, a pry bar or a second person would help. Somebody needs to line the bolt up while somebody pushes this way. You can do it yourself, and I'm doing it myself. I'm literally leering this way and tightening this by hand until I know those threads are catching and they're nice and true. Because if it's not, they're going to cross thread, and you don't want to cross thread it. This is the biggest risk of doing this job without the tool. But I'll tell you... This is easier than doing it with the tool, but you have to know what to do if it starts going like this. Don't panic if it pulls down and pushes across. This is absolutely normal. Literally, you've just got to keep leering it this way, and then you can get this stud in. This stud will be harder. So once you've got this bolt in, getting this stud in will be easier. Now, I've got it hand tied. Literally, just keep pushing one way until you see the bolt is starting to thread into the block. If for whatever reason it goes tight, stop. Stop or apply more pressure because if it's going tight, it means the bolt is struggling. There's too much pressure on it. It could cross thread. When there's less pressure, it means you have put in the right amount of pressure on that alternator and it's going in true. And just keep an eye on the bolt very carefully. Keep an eye on the threads. If they're jumping back out, that's not a good sign. <sighs> Ooh, right, that is now becoming nice and true. And then you do the bottom bolt and the bottom bolt will allow the alternator to move that way a bit more. So just gradually work it through. And that bolt is actually quite tight now, but it's not too tight because we don't want it ultra tight, we want movement. So we can keep leering this to the right hand side. Just keep pushing and it will go in. And it is going in very, very, very slowly. There we go. Okay. Right, bottom bolt is almost back in. You can see that it's gone in. 
Okay, when the alternator's creeping along, it's gone in. Now, let me just get the stud. There you go, that goes in as well. You know it's good when that starts going in. There is a bit of pressure, I can't hand tighten it, which means there's still pressure on coming this way. So we just keep whacking this bolt in, keep applying pressure, and once that is all the way in, tighten the bottom bolt, and then we can start tightening this one. And then you're done. Okay. Just pressure. Just little bits at a time. Keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going. And yeah, that is now flush of the block. We can now, oh yes, the stud's moving even more now. So what we can do now is tighten up the bottom bolt again to push it further across. You've got to do things incrementally with this job. Don't rush, do things at a time. Take these three, the stud, the bolt, and the bottom bolt out equally, and you put them back equally, okay? And believe you me, this is quicker than using the, the tool. You'd have to take the bloody wheel off, get under the car, it's an absolute fact. You don't want to be doing that. You don't want to get your trousers dirty. Uh, and then it should, oh, would help. There we go, and it winds in, look at that. In fact, I can almost hand tighten it, but just go gently and again, just apply a bit of pressure, not too much, because that bolt's in now. This bolt will do all the work for you. Yeah, you this stud should just go most of the way, and that's easy. In fact, it's spinning really nice and freely, so there we go. So just, in fact, I can almost wind that in. So, yeah, that's starting to just ease. It's getting tight. We'll just keep going until it's tight enough. There you go. Don't over tighten that. That is as, that is pretty much how far it should go in. I'm just gonna make sure that this is tight. There is a torque setting, but I'm not bothered. There we go. Just tighten that one up, tighten the bottom one on, and then we can start putting the bits back on. Now I've got the nut down here. And that nut just goes on there. There we go. And then just tighten all three back up. And you're done. Done. So that bottom bolt done, tightened, tightened. That's how much it should really come off the end of the stud. Um, just make sure the belt is nice and on. It is on there. It's going nicely around the alternator, the, uh, the water pump. Uh, I don't know if there's such a thing as an alternator pump. I was actually about to say that then. Alternator, power steering, just make sure it's sitting nicely. Yep. <laughs> actually, you should do that before doing this because you don't want to be doing all that again. Trust me. Um, you do feel it on your back just a little bit, um, but it's not too bad. And just whack this back on. Just a bit of a fuddy duddy. Yep, lovely. And the nut, oh yes, it goes on there, and you're done. The hardest bit is pushing it across, believe you me, you do feel it on your back. Get a second person to help, get a pry bar, there's a couple of ways of doing it. I've just done it using brute force, be honest with you, it's fine. As when that starts threading in, half the job is done, 75% of the effort is done. There we go. Lovely, and then I'll just put the cap back on. Lovely, all done. That car is now ready to go. We'll put the battery back on. And that is how you change a stretch belt on a Mark 1 Focus. That is nice and tight as well. Yeah, that's nice and tight. Oh, I didn't compare the differences, did I? Silly me. Um, the differences between the belts, but all good. Right, I'll put the battery back on and we'll start her up. Right, that is in. And now I'm gonna test the car, I'm gonna start it up 
and I'm going to immediately do what I did before, heated rear window and the front heated windscreen and we'll see if that makes a sound. Sometimes it actually squeals when you don't press the switch, but fine, no problems at all. I just need to check one thing. Right, whenever you've messed with, I oh know I've got to put the code back in because I've messed with that. Uh, one thing to always check, I mean these are great for this. shouldn't really be doing that from cold but it's only a gentle kick there you go now what happens and this is nothing to be worried about if you've got a car with a heated windscreen oh, the battery on this car is good the alternator is good but what happens to the voltage when I do this and I can barely hear a sound from that belt 13.9 oh it's held voltage that's really good, it wasn't doing that before. Usually it dropped to 12. If it drops below 12 volts, I've had that before. Now I had that with the old belt, Now clearly this belt is better because the old belt, you press that button and it would go to 12 volts so you could tell that that belt was just not tensioned properly. It's a good belt to have as an emergency backup, but the Ford belt clearly is doing its thing and that's what will happen with a Ford belt it tensions and it's the alternator is producing the right voltage because there's no slipping I mean if I put the heated one on there you go 13.8 13.9 see what I mean put the headlights on we're gonna give it some real voltage now look at that still holding 13.8 turn that off fine there you go. And that concludes this episode. So I hope this has been informative. I hope that you've learned a few things from it. Uh, I hope that the owners of such cars, if you have a face lifted automatic 1.6 without air conditioning you will have a belt i don't think it was fitted to any other variant than that good day all take care oh because i'm videoing this for well just over a week before christmas happy christmas